President of the TUC Congress in its 150th year, 150th year to address Congress. Sally. Congress, thank you. Sally Hunt, TUC President. Very proud to be here in Manchester, this brave and radical city in this, our anniversary year. And before I do anything else, I want to say thank you. Thank you to this wonderful movement, all of the extraordinary, hard-working and committed people who make up this Congress of ours. It's such an incredible privilege to be your president, but it's lovely too for me to have members of my family here, particularly my daughter Catherine, my mum who can't be here, but I want to thank her now for the courage that she has shown for all her children and the values that she taught us all. And I want to say hello too to my auntie Val, who is here. You, along with my uncle Ivan, taught me many of the trade union values that I hold dear today. You need to know, Congress, that my auntie Val is a lifelong member of the Labour Party and of her trade union as well, and rightly, she is very proud. She's told me many stories, but I'll share just this one with you today. About her trade union Congress in the 60s, mainly blokes who felt it was right to vote against her and other women like her being allowed to wear trousers to work. Well, for you, Auntie Val, and for all those other women of that time, I'd like to say, for the record, that today, the female president of the TUC is wearing trousers to work. And I want to thank you. I want to thank you for starting that argument because we always get there in the end. So my family have been a rock for me in so many ways, and I'm really pleased to introduce you all to each other, one family to another, because we're family as well. All of us here together, the trade union family. 150 years ago, just down the road from here, at the Mechanics Institute. 34 delegates met to discuss matters, as they said it, pertaining to the general interests of the working classes. There's been an almost unbroken line of meetings since that date, year on year, building our movement, so that today, the TUC is recognized as the voice of working people, and we, are its custodians. Our different unions are only part of that story, one which will see us in the next few days focusing on our future, how we build our industrial strength, how we grow our numbers, how we expand our political influence, building, growing, taking forward what our forebears started, and taking strength from our movement's birth, our beginnings, our roots. In 1817, 10,000 weavers and spinners gathered just outside this hall. They had blankets, rugs and coats wrapped in bundles under their arms. It was the biggest meeting of its kind ever organised in Manchester. They planned to march to London to draw attention to the poverty from which they suffered. It's the Blanketeers' March. Well, the King's Dragoons were sent in to disperse that meeting, which they did, violently, but still they marched and were attacked a mile from here, bullet wounds and sabre cuts inflicted. In 1819, again, just outside this building, 60,000 people gathered to demand parliamentary reform. They wanted a vote that counted. At least 15 people died. The Peterloo Massacre. 
In 1834, six agricultural workers in Tolpuddle swore an oath to support each other. For that, they were sentenced to penal transportation to Australia for their crime. And in 1882, the socialist and anti-fascist Sylvia Pankhurst was born here in Manchester and struggled for years, years, for women's suffrage. And isn't it about time that woman was honoured with a statue in Parliament? Because I think it is. In 1888, women workers at Bryant and May went on strike for better, safer terms and conditions. And in 1900, in Taff Vale, over 1,300 workers went on strike in solidarity with the victimised colleagues. The, the court then held that the union was liable for the company's losses. In 1910, in Crowdley Heath, women chainmakers who had to hammer 5,000 links a week to earn the equivalent of 25p well, they laid down their tools to demand a living wage, and they did so for four long months. 1926, the general strike. 1968, Dagenham. 1972 and 84, the miners' strike. 1989, the ambulance drivers. 2011, public sector pensions. It doesn't matter which place which industry, there will always be employers or government or both saying no, and there will always be people, trade unionists, workers who will say yes and be willing to fight. We don't always win, but we'll always try, because that, that's who we are. And we don't limit that to this country. I've, I've just come back from a Justice for Colombia delegation visit in Colombia. There are still trade unionists there being put in jail or killed. But they don't stop fighting. I've been in Palestine watching young children have rubber bullets shot at them by painfully young conscripts sat on a wall which divides populations and destroys people's lives. But good people, Palestinian and Israeli, don't stop fighting for these injustices to end. I've sat with Zimbabwean trade unionists, their arms in bandages, after beatings who organise workers who have no resources whatsoever and face real physical danger. I've sat in more than one embassy demanding the release of people unjustly imprisoned. This year, that was South Korean trade union leaders jailed for their activism and now, because of us, released. I've been... I've been with trade union members giving their time, their resources to refugees and migrants here and abroad. And I've listened in horror more times than I can count to the testimony of trade unionists from around the world arrested, beaten, penalised for defending their rights. It's always, it's always a humbling experience. But it is one that's taught me the real value of my trade union card and the absolute need for the TUC to be international in its perspective. Our collective voice matters. It literally saves lives. Congress, if I look around this hall, at this Congress, I see unions doing the same today as they've always done. Equity, with its safe space campaign to confront sexual harassment. Unison, defeating the government to secure access to justice for millions of working people. <laughs> NUJ, NUJ, defending freedom of speech for their members' safety here and abroad. GMB, 
fighting for decency at Uber and Amazon and Usdor doing the same at Lidl and MSF. The PFA, where are you? I don't know, I can't see you. But wherever you are, you're fighting hard to kick racism out of football. And FBU, with everything you've done since Grenfell, respect. Community. Community working to keep a steel industry in this country. EIS, NASUWT, NEU, NAHT, making the case for education, good education, taught by well-rewarded staff. And my own union, fighting for pensions, justice, prospect, science funding, finance unions, staff and customer safety in banks and building societies, ASLEF, RMT, TSSA, all campaigning for a publicly owned, properly staffed railway. And the CWU doing the same for a publicly owned post office. Nautilus, safe seaways, the justice unions, a respectful and secure system, the health unions, protecting patients, representing staff, keeping the NHS alive in the face of a sustained right-wing assault. The Baker's Union and McDonald's unite, not so large that it won't prioritise three branches of TGI Fridays who made the mistake of thinking it was OK to mess around with the tips of minimum wage staff. And next to them, one of our smallest, newest affiliates, the Artists' Union, not afraid to prioritise support for a national petition to prevent forced deportations. And all the others, all of you, too numerous to mention, doing everything you can to advance the cause of Labour. We, we are the trade union movement and we are powerful agents of change. We don't just observe history, we make it. The Trade Union Congress, you, doing what you have always done, standing with and for working people in this country, making sure this is a country for those people. 150 years ago today and today, the same family, the same fight. So let me return to 1868. Just think what that must have been like, standing with each other for the first time, different industries, different skills to make common cause. And 20 years later, those match girls, some as young as 12, working 14-hour days on their feet, forced to buy their own equipment. Well, they got fossy jaw. And for those who don't know what that is, that rots. It rots the inside of your mouth, all to make matches. There was an article written about them at the time saying they were slave labour. It caused an absolute scandal. So their managers asked them to sign statements, effectively saying, oh, no, we love, we love our jobs. We love our managers. We love our company. Well, they refused. And one of their number was sacked. It was meant to shut them up. But instead, they walked out and they didn't go back until they got her back, got time off and got a complaints procedure. Well, Congress, I'm proud that today we've got the great granddaughter of one of those strike leaders, Sarah Chapman, with us today. I don't know if you can stand up. It's lovely to have you here. So whilst those fantastic young women were doing that, the TUC was meeting, it was organising, growing stronger, as, was it, as were its unions. And in 1906, they got their strongest vote in Parliament. And one of the first things those trade union-supported MPs did was to pass legislation that turned back tough fail. And then what they did is they made it illegal to use white phosphorus 
the same white phosphorus that had rotted the jaws of those young women. I say all this because in our 150th year, it's worth remembering just how hard those people worked for our benefit. Everything, everything we have today has been fought for by people just like us who came together, stood with each other, sometimes died for each other to give us decency and dignity. So that when we look at the challenges we have, which are many, we have casualisation, we have Brexit, we have the rising intolerance which is coming through in many places, and it's all coming at us, saying you are worth less, you must work harder, you must feel less secure in your job. None of that, none of that is new. And none of that is stuff that we can't deal with. We've done it throughout our history, and we will do it now. Ordinary people like you and me and all those that we represent. I wanted to end with this. A hundred and thirty years ago, that was something that killed people. Painfully, cruelly, unavoidably. And today is just a match. And that's because of the trade union movement. And that's you. So happy birthday and thank you. Thank you, President.